Hey there, THP 494 and 598, Matthew here. So what we're going to look at today is we're going to revisit one of the things we did in class where we actually uh, started to play with what it means to build some more audio reactive components. So um, this is a kind of like example of what we looked at, right? We've got a kind of very simple um, kind of high mids lows analysis tool, a kind of oscilloscope tool that we want to play with, and then some uh, kind of like uh, spectrographic kind of representations that are a little more uh, playful and a little more exciting at the same time. So that's what we're going to kind of get at here today. That's what we're, we're going to start to pull apart, but there are lots of pieces to what goes into this. Uh, and the kind of fundamental piece that I want us to focus on first is thinking about how we can start um, to make our little control module here. If we were to look at the network that we built in class, we can see that we've actually got two networks that are going on, right? And actually many more than that, but two main networks where we've got an audio control module that lives out here in the root of our network. And then our example has several uh, networks that live here inside of it. Now, the reason that we did that is that we wanted to try and think about this audio system uh, as being something that we are likely to want to have lots of different places, right? This is uh, chances are, if we're building something like this, then the audio portion, right, the audio module, um, is probably not going to live necessarily embedded in um, everything in our project. We're going to kind of want to be able to grab it when we want it um, at various stages or in various screens. So that's the reason that we're kind of starting to think about how we can make uh, a more modular approach here. So there are several things in here that are going on, right? We've got a little interface that we built for this thing. We've got a little system of controlling uh, a kind of simple playback kind of uh, tool, right? A kind of like um, playlist organizer, sort of. <laughs> and then we have a, a, another little simple piece of analysis. This is doing our high mids lows. So we're actually going to take apart all of these things, right? So the beginning of our roadmap is to first think about how we build this audio module, how we build this thing that we can use lots of different places, and then we'll start to dive into uh, these different forms that we might play with there as well. Now, because we're moving away from some of these ideas um, that we've played with before, where we have uh, kind of like islands in terms of the networks that we've built, where they haven't necessarily required a whole lot of other things besides what's here inside of the actual network. This time we're going to start to, uh, we're going to kind of continue our conversation, I should say, around how we start to think about best practices for building something that has lots of different pieces that we want, uh, need access to. So, I'm going to go ahead and move this over here to the side for just one second. I'm going to move here out of project one. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to add a new container here to my network. And I'm just going to call this audio. And now what I want to do is here on the desktop, right, on my actual computer, I'm going to go ahead and make a new folder. And I'm going to call this uh, audio mod. And you can call it whatever you'd like. The more important thing is that in making this particular folder, really what I'm up to is I'm starting to think about how I can have a single place. And let's open up that window here. Okay, there we go. How I can start to organize all the files that are going to be associated with this particular application that I'm building and how I can organize them in a reliable way. So really one of the things that I want to have is I want to know that all of my assets in terms of my audio, video, anything that I might use, live in a single place. So I've gone ahead and set up this project folder, right? This is where I'm going to save my uh, touch center network. And I'm going to go ahead and do that here right out the gate. Let's save this and let's navigate to it. And uh, we can call it whatever we like, right? Audio play, we might as well stick with our naming convention. There it showed up, that's wonderful. We're very excited, we're very happy. Okay, so you know, why go through all this hassle? Well, what I wanna do is I wanna know um, that when this particular network starts up or whenever I access it, that it has a, a kind of fixed place where it's always looking for audio files. And more than just knowing that it's going to work on my computer, right, because the absolute paths that are um, kind of related to my machine are going to work no matter where I go. But I want to know that I could put this on a thumb drive, um, throw it on the computer at a venue, or throw it on a different laptop, and then it's still going to be able to find all of the assets that are associated with uh, this particular network. 
So that's going to uh, that's part of what I'm up to here, right? So um, before we leave behind this um, folder here, I want to go ahead and make a new folder. Actually, a couple more folders. Um, so the first one here is going to be called Assets. And then inside Assets, let's go ahead and make another new one called Audio. And then inside of this Audio folder, I've gone ahead and already found uh, a couple songs that I want to use, which is great. And, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, dump them in here. So you can use any uh, audio that you already have on your computer, or you can download some new audio. It's totally up to you how you want to start to think about that. More, most importantly is that here inside of our project folder, right? Inside of assets, inside of audio, we've got some audio files that are here waiting for us. And we'll see why that's important um, in not very long. Okay, now I've already done uh, this particular work before, so there are a couple things that I already know about how I want to set this up. Um, and you're welcome to kind of play with some of these ideas. But I know that I want this container uh, to be 150 wide by 47, right? And I just, that's like the place where I landed after experimenting a little bit. You're welcome to change any of those dimensions. Or if you're following along, then just plug those numbers in right there. We'll see how they're going to work. And let's go ahead and dive inside of this bad boy. Okay, so here inside, um, to get started, let's look at this. Let's first look at if we added a folder dat. So if we go ahead and grab a folder dat, we can see that our folder dat is very good, right, at finding uh, files. And we can see that it's already gone ahead and found our project folder. Excellent. And if I wanted it to find some contents in the project folder, I could even specify that I want to look at the project folder. And I'm going to uh, concatenate this string, right? I'm going to add to the end of the string a few more things. So I want, uh, for example, slash assets, slash audio, right? And there we can see the three songs that are inside of our folder, right? If I bring this over here, right? All I did was modify the file path to include assets and audio. And there we have it. Now that's all well and good. And that would probably work just fine. And um, if we're building a system where uh, this particular uh, kind of organization is kind of the limit of how we think about paths, then this might be an excellent way for us to just kind of end. What I like to do, and what I would encourage you to do, is to think about how we might extend this. So um, we're not just stuck with this one place. Well, we're not stuck with multiple, multiple places where we have to make this change. right? So for example, if we think that Right, we've got an assets folder. Well, we might have video assets. We might have uh, pieces of geometry. We might have uh, any number of things that are also included in here. Right, especially if we're doing some projection mapping, we might have masks or um, grids or all sorts of stuff. To help us with that, um, what I wanted to do here today is take another look at how we use modules. So we're going to go ahead and add another base. And again, I remember, I like to color code things, so it's up to you if you'd like to color code this or not. I think it's excellent in terms of staying visually organized. We're going to call this local. Here inside of local, let's make another base. We're going to call this modules. And color code it as well. And we'll dive inside here, and we'll land in the middle. And we're going to throw down a text at. Now, we've done modules before, so some of this should look fairly familiar for the most part. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. But it's important to know that I need to name this dat something um, significant for me. So paths, right? I'm going to call this thing paths because it's going to be how I want to think about um, the kind of file paths to various things inside of my uh, network. And in this case, audio, right, is going to be the project folder. And I'm going to add to that the same thing that I did before, right? And this is a string that I've got to organize. And it's assets, audio. Right, and if we were to just quickly evaluate what that looks like, right? Like, let's just evaluate this expression. And we can just copy it right in here. Copy. And over here in our eval dat, let's paste that in. Bada bing, bada boom. That is exactly the directory that we want. Now we made that a module, which means that 
when we or we put it on our modules, which means that here in our folder stat, rather than this call, right, project folder plus blah blah blah, blah now I can just say me.mod, right, modules, and then I want to look in the thing called paths, and let's like split our view here so we can remember how that works, right, modules, paths, and out of paths, I want audio. And that's gone ahead and evaluated this particular expression and then dropped that in right here for us. Now, this also, right, like that's just, uh, in my opinion, that's a lot easier to remember. It also means that if we add something like video or masks or any number of things in here, we can start to uh, reorganize some of this. We might think if we were building something much larger and more complex, like a jukebox, we might organize our audio um, to have a different kind of construction, right? So our audio folder might hold things like, um, oh gosh, who knows what. Uh, we might separate that into genres. So we might make folders that were 90s, 80s, 70s music, right? We can start to think about the kind of concatenation and organization method as being a way that we can start to uh, take strong advantage of some of this. Okay, so that's the first step. Let's go ahead and save this. Don't forget to save frequently. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to start to think about how we build our audio switcher. And essentially what I want to build here first is I want to build a, little, a real simple little audio system uh, that's going to go ahead and use the, fo the files that are inside of this um, folder right, that we've already established. And I want to play the first one, and then I want to play the second one, I want to play the third one. When I get to the end of that list, I want to go back to the top. Easy peasy. Okay, well, how can I start to think about that? Let's go ahead and add a select dat in here, and I don't think I got a select dat. Yoink! And we know that with our select dat, right, we can specify index. And we can get rid of this first one. In fact, we could even go ahead and take advantage of this thing, uh, include the first row. Um, and that's off. And you know what? Let's, let's not worry about that right now. Um, because what we can do is we can just drive this based on changing our row index. So we can say 1, 1. That takes us to the first row. 2, 2. It takes us to the second row. So this is an excellent way for us to think about how we can go ahead and grab things here outside of our our folder, which is lovely. Um, but how do we start to work with that a little bit more? Okay, well, let's um, go ahead and end this in a null, because a null is always an excellent way for us to kind of hold on to our progress here in a way that means that we can change it. And let's add an audio file in. Chop. Because this is really where the magic is going to happen. We're going to use this audio file in um, in order to control what's playing at a given time. Now you'll notice that once you've dropped your audio file in chop into your network, you're probably not going to hear anything. And that's a-okay, because in, in order to actually hear something, we've got to connect this to an audio file out. So we've actually got to plug this thing into some, uh, in the analog world, we'd think of this as speakers, right? You can't just have a CD player, your CD player has to go into an output device. And that's the same thing that we've got to do here. So let's not be crazy. Let's add an audio device out here into our network. And let's go ahead and let's turn the volume down to get started. Right? This is a good practice, otherwise you'll blow out your eardrums or your speakers. You'll be really upset about the world. And now we can go ahead and just gain up here a little bit so we can hear it. And we should be able to go all the way up to one and hear that we've got music loud and clear coming through our audio device out. We can also turn it down here. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this volume down because we don't necessarily need it, right, for what we're working on right now. And I'm just going to scooch this a little bit further down our network because we're going to add some more things in here in not too long. Okay, so right now we've got an audio file that's playing, and this happens to be one of the generic audio files. Not generic, but one of the supplied audio files that comes with the touch designer download. Um, which happens to live right in the samples folder. And I want this file instead to look right here. So we need to make a few changes. So 
We'll notice with our folder in under the columns page that we can go ahead and change around some of the things that we're getting out of this. So I don't uh, need the extension or the type or the size or the depth of the folder. I do want the path. So now I'm getting the name and the path to this particular file. In my select, I've got a choice. I might decide that I want to have a display here that's involved with this. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it in here. Uh, and in my null, I just know that I need to reference column one. So let's go ahead and write the expression to fetch that for us, right? So I'm going to, and let's change the name of this to audio select, right? I've changed the name of my null so that my, the expression I'm going to write uh, is a little bit more human readable. So I'm going to look for the operator that's called audio select, and I want to look in the row that is row zero and the column that's column one. And if we expand this a little bit, I should see that sure enough, I'm getting this DJ earworm track, which is this G DJ earworm track. And bonus points when I change um, the index values, I switch to a new song. Whew. All right. And if we were to turn the volume up, we could hear all those things happening. Okay. So that's pretty good. That's, that's getting us someplace, and we can start to feel pretty good about uh, what we've done so far. But this isn't totally what I want, because we're going to get to the end of this song, and then we're just going to play it again. We're just going to kind of constantly re recycle through this song, which is not what I want. Now, one of the things that I can use is I can use an info chop. And my info chop is going to give me a whole ton of information about what's going on with this audio file line. So if I grab this and drag it right down here onto my info chop, or drag it into the operator reference field in my info chop, then I get out a bunch of information, right? And in particular, I get out the thing that I'm really interested in, which is fraction. This tells me where I am inside of this particular file. So let's go ahead and change our scope to only be fraction. So now this only gives us our uh, position, right? Our kind of absolute position in some respects. If we might, we might think about this as a kind of normalized position, right? We don't get time code out of this. We just get uh, a kind of fractional representation of where we are, which is exactly what we want. And now all we have to do is we just need to build a system to think about how we can utilize this to drive what's going on up here in our select. Now, we happen to know that there's this lovely thing called a count chop. And so let's just look at our count chop for a second. We're going to plug in a constant, and we're just going to try and understand some of the things that happens with our count. So if I plug our count here into the top, and we start to move our constant, every time we break the zero threshold, we increment our count. And that's great. That's exactly what um, is great about count is it counts for us. So let's change our trigger threshold. So instead of triggering at zero, let's trigger at 0 0.995, maybe, right? So at 99.5% of the way through our particular song, that's going to trigger us to count again. And now we can see that only when we're up here do we increment our counting. Excellent. So that gets us part of the way there now, right? So now our trigger threshold is set so that when this particular index gets all the way to 0 0.99 or 0 0.995, then we count. Okay. Now that still hasn't solved one of our problems yet. And one of our problems happens to be that uh, we can't count to 15. We only want to limit our count to the number of rows that we have over here. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at another page here. Let's look at our count page, and we can go ahead and set this to loop min max. I want to start at 1, right, because I want to skip 0 as a row, and I want to count no higher than 3. So I'm going to take my count, and for my maximum limit, I'm going to use a reference. So I'm going to look at my folder in 1, probably, I think is what it's called. Folder 1, excuse me. So we're going to look at just folder 1. And we're going to ask for the num rows. Now, this is 4, right? Because it's counting 0 as a row. So all we need to do is subtract 1 from this list. And now we've got 1 to 3. And that is going to go ahead and nail us right into what we want, right? We should now see that we can count up to 3, and we just recycle back down.
If we were to add some more files into this folder, then sure as shooting, what would happen is that we'd see more things here. Our count maximum would also increase, right? Everything's going to kind of live update itself just the way that we want it to. Uh, and we're starting to cook with gas. So the last piece of this puzzle then is how do I start to think about making this drive my select? Well, we've got a great tool up our sleeve, which is the chop execute dat. And we can use this stat to run a few, to run a script for us every time a particular event happens. So I'm going to go ahead and just position this down here. And what I want to do is instead of value change, uh, I just want to do off to on. Is that true? Let's think about that for a second. Mm, actually, I think I want to just leave it value change because I don't want to worry about a change from zero to one. I want to um, run this script every time this index changes. Perfect. All right, so we happen to be looking at count one. That's the operator. We're looking at all the channels, which is great. We've only got one channel in here, so that's A-OK. -okay. And we're only going to worry about this value change, which means we can go ahead and nerf all the rest of these other things because we don't need to worry about those other definitions for us. And what we want to do then is we just want to write our simple script for what we want to have happen here. So if we, let's go ahead and um, bring this up closer with us, right? Because we can move this thing around a little bit. Ooh, and somehow you got all moved around. Okay. So if we were to like just bring this up here so we can see both of these at the same time. I can see that here in select one, I've got these parameters called row index start and row index end. Great. And that's what I want to change with this particular script, right? So and this is called select one. So let's go ahead and start in here. So I want the operator called select one. And I want its parameter called row index start to be equal to some number. Well, what number? I'd like it to be equal to this particular thing, right? Three. Now, because this chop execute is watching this operator, one of the things that's passed through here is the value that's associated with our channel that we're watching, right? So we can see here val is something that comes through. Um, in our comments here, we can see that val is a numeric value of the, sam of the changed sample, which means that val is going to be equal, in, this, in our case, to 3, or 2, or 1, or whatever that number happens to be. So we can say instead that I want the op select one dot par dot row index start to be equal to val. Now, it also means that I want to change our row index end. So select one. So op select one dot par dot row index end is also going to be equal to val. So those things will change together. So this should mean, and let's go ahead and scooch this down here a little bit, that if we move out here enough, uh, we should be able to see this thing actually change. Um, when we kind of cycle through here. And we might have to get a little, little bit closer. There we go. All right, so now as I move this value, we should see it change. Oh, let's get in here a little bit closer. <gasps> nope, not yet. That's all right. We must have just missed something. <gasps> Excellent. We have an error. We love errors because it help us learn, helps us learn things. And let's see what our error code tells us. Okay, object has no attribute row indes start. That's because I need to learn how to spell row index start. There we go. That should fix our script error. And let's try one more time to see what we get. There we go. And sure as shooting text, we are changing this thing by cranking on this, on this slider. OK. So we practiced all that with our constant because we've got a lot of control over our constant. Now all we have to do is swap our input now to our info one. Now we'll see that our fraction got a little bit cattywampus here. That's okay. We're just going to pulse to reset and we should be all set. The other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to dock this particular chop execute because I don't need to see it hanging out here. So I can choose dock to, I'm going to dock it to count and we can see that it's just tucked away right there, nice and tidy and hidden away. Okay, so now we've got a counting system that's going to go ahead and power through here for us. And every time we get to the end of something, it's going to go ahead and switch us. Beautiful, gorgeous. We're looking, we're looking good, kids.
Okay, the other thing that I want to think about is I happen to know that I'm probably going to want to include one other thing here inside of my network. And that's uh, in building this audio reactive thing, I want to be able to play from a playlist. I want to be able to play from a, a set of files and folders on my computer. Wonderful. But I also would be, like to be able to grab a live input, right? And that might be a microphone or, or it might be a line in from a board or from another sound system. So let's go ahead and add an audio device in. Now, I don't have anything attached right now, which is why we're not seeing anything moving or changing here. But now we've got an audio device in. And while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and insert a switch. And we'll plug our audio device in into our switch here. And we might want to reorganize this a little bit so that we don't have crossed wires, right? We could just tidy this up a little bit. We'll bump it up. And we need to put this on index one, because index one corresponds to down here, right? Zero, one. OK. So now we've got set up for us uh, a handy little system that's got an audio uh, device in, right? So we can actually hear uh, a mic level in or a line in. Or if we've got an audio interface, we can use the audio interface. Uh, we've got an audio file in, so we can just kind of play back a playlist. Um, we've got a system of folders and selects set up so that we can go ahead and grab all that information. We've got a counting system that runs a script every time we get to 99.5% of our particular track. And then all of that is finally hooked up to an audio device out. So we are actually making some noise with this as well. OK, so we are cooking with gas, kids. We've made good progress. And next, what we're going to start to look at is we're going to build just a real simple little interface for controlling this. After we build our simple interface, the next step after that is to dive in and take a close look at how we build an audio analysis module, because we're going to want to do a little bit of analysis here as well. OK, so that's what's coming up. Hang on to your socks, and here we go.